I have been asked several times, what is investment banking? Now, we everybody talks about investment banking quite a lot, but um, I want to spend a bit of time in this uh, video just going through and explaining to you uh, what investment banking is and really what it does and where it sits in the industry. So we're going to discuss what is meant by investment banking, the position of investment banking in the financial services market and the role that it plays in finance. Now, let's start by taking a holistic view. To take a step back, there are basically four sectors in the finance industry. There are banks, there are financial institutions, there are corporates, and there are accounting firms. I'm going to delve, first of all, a little bit into each of these so you get the context, and then we'll go back to investment banking. So within banks, broadly speaking, there are commercial banking operations, there's sales and trading, there's equity research and there's investment banking. So that's investment banking sitting inside banks or sitting inside the banking sector because there can be uh, very large firms which have an investment banking division or there can be a, a smaller firm which is specialised just on investment banking activities. When we talk about financial institutions, we're talking about institutions who are basically handling and investing money. And essentially, we can look at private equity or venture capital firms, we can look at fund management firms, and we can look at research firms who basically provide research, uh, particularly to fund management firms, but to a certain extent as well into private equity. Corporates, which are basically all the big companies out there that are doing their normal business, obviously have a very significant finance function. Now, part of that is around corporate development. Part of that is around investor relations, particularly if they're a public company. They have a treasury function, which helps them manage and optimize their cash and their money. And then there's a financial planning and analysis function. Within accounting firms, who really hold, hold everybody's feet to the fire, you, uh, apart from audit, which you see at the bottom, you can also get valuations, uh, transaction advisory, and due diligence. So those are the four areas. But now let's go and look a little bit more deeply at the role of investment banking. Investment banking's clients are actually quite broad. Uh, they are can be governments, corporates, or financial financial institutions. When I was at Hawke Vet, we were involved in the privatisation of British Gas and a couple of other of the, the big British privatisations in the late 80s. So our, our client ultimately was the British government. But we also floated uh, public companies um, such as uh, Shanks & McEwen. We uh, floated... Um, uh, oh gosh, uh, the various property companies, a number of financial um, uh, country funds. So while I was there for four years, we did quite a lot of flotation work because that was I was in the investment banking um, corporate finance um, group within Horgavet, and Horgavet was primarily a stockbroker. And then, of course, you have financial institutions as well. And the role of the investment bank is to act as an intermediary between investors and the corporates who require capital. Now, full service banks, which are the really large banks, people like Barclays, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, people like that, they offer a broad range of financial services. They offer M&A advisory, mergers and acquisitions advisory. They have sales and trading desks. They have equity research. They have asset management. They have commercial banking and they to a certain extent, many have retail banking. Now, um, investment banks or the investment banking division of an investment of a, a larger bank focuses on underwriting, uh, which is helping firms to uh, basically raise capital and M&A advisory services, which include company sales. The whole point about um, the uh, m a process is that the investment bank runs the whole process so it's not just the negotiation and structuring it's the project management of the entire process and then in the capital raising when the um the company is selling stocks or bonds to investors then there's a whole underwriting process looking firstly at mergers and acquisitions you're helping corporates to find, evaluate, and complete the acquisition or sales of businesses. Now, we've talked about acting on the buy side or sell side, and a quick word on that. If you're acting on the buy side, you're advising the company and you're going out and searching for targets and helping them to buy something. If you're acting on the sell side, then the company you're advising is the company that is being sold and you're out there looking for people to buy it. So that's the difference between buy side and sell side. 
The M&A process is a well-established one, and there's a lot of depth and detail that one could go into. But let me just run you through these headline points. First of all, you need to be clear with your client exactly what their acquisition strategy is. And from that, you need to set clear criteria that the investment bank can go out and search using to make sure that they are only coming up with a, a smaller group of potential targets based on these criteria. They conduct that search process and then they start to focus down on a very limited number of targets and start some deal planning, which also involves the valuation and evaluation of these targets. Then you make the approach and you start a negotiation with the potential company that you want to buy. And that uh, once you get past the heads of terms, that leads into due diligence, that leads into documentation and contracts, particularly the sale and purchase contracts, that leads into any finance that needs to be raised. And finally, you bring it all together, you execute the deal and you close it. Now, underwriting services are all about raising capital through the sale of stocks or bonds. It includes IPOs. Uh, this capital raising can, of course, be done um, for private companies raising from private equity or venture capital or angel investors. Um, and it does also uh, involve a book building process where basically the investment bank um, presents the investment opportunity to investors and builds a, a book a, a group of investors who want to participate in the issue and then eventually the issue gets launched and the investors invest. Um, I'm not going to go into that in a huge amount of time. I spend most of my time on the uh, the M&A, the capital raising side. I did work for four years on the uh, stockbroking side of Hawkebet where we raised uh, money and we floated companies um, but um, much more of my experience has come from the, uh, the, the M&A side of investment banking. So let's talk a little bit then about the sorts of skills you need to have if you want to get into investment banking. And a lot of these skills you can now pick up with, obviously, with online courses and training such as this. But you do need to be able to demonstrate these skills. And this is going far beyond um, a, uh, um, an MBA. This is a hands-on useful deal skills that you need to work with. So we're looking at things like financial modeling, being able to model a business so that you can do a discounted cash flow or you can model a leverage buyout. There are business valuation techniques which you need to know how to use. Again, discounted cash flow comes into that, but you need to understand things like the capital asset pricing model, the weighted average cost of capital, etc. So there's a range of different methods for business valuation. You need to know how to put together pitch books and presentations because you basically need to go and present yourself to companies and pitch deal ideas. And I've done that for many years. You need to understand transaction documentation all the way through the process. So the information memorandum, the teaser, the term sheet, confidentiality agreements, data rooms, that sort of thing. You need to work and be very good at your relationship management. These are clients who have got lots of options in terms of investment banking services and you need to develop those client relationships. And then you need to be able to go out and sell your services and develop your business as a salesman and in order to win uh, mandates in order to get business to come in and get paid. And of course, last but absolutely not least, you need to understand the very complex but subtle art of negotiation. So let's, before I wrap up, let me have a quick summary of my career. I spent um, eight years in the British Army um, in the early 80s. I left in 1988 and I joined Hogerbeck Corporate Finance. In fact, I joined Hogerbeck on the Graduate Trainee Scheme but uh, and went into the Corporate Finance Department after three months and I was there for four years. I then got headhunted to West Deutsche Landers Bank initially as an assistant director, then as a director. And I was there from 1992 to 1998, doing a number of sectors, but I ended up in the tech sector. Obviously, towards the back end of the 90s, everything was going tech bonkers. I was then headhunted to join SG Cowan to run IT services M&A in Europe for them. And I was there for a year before stepping out of that to part uh, to co-found uh, Palmar Capital with one of my previous colleagues. Um, and I was there as a managing director. So from between 2000 and 2008, I was at Palmal. And then I stepped out of that to co-found another firm, IAF Capital, uh, with a different partner between 2008 and 2016. And pretty well since then, I've been doing consulting work 
and I've obviously been doing a lot of teaching. So that gives you a, a quick flavor of my background as well as investment banking. So this, I hope, helps you to understand the context of what investment banking is, what inv investment bankers do, the sorts of skills you're going to need, and to understand a little bit about my background so you understand where my experience has all come from.